With a 19 millimeter socket, remove all these plastic nuts that hold on your hubcap, if you have this. Remove the hubcap, and then with a 19 millimeter socket, remove all five of your lug nuts, and then take the wheel off. Next, I want to take off the axle nut with a 36 millimeter socket. You'll need a deep socket for this because the axle shaft sticks out quite a bit and you need the socket to fit over it. Next, I'm going to take my hammer and make sure the axle pushes through. In this case, it does. You want to make sure it breaks free from the inside of the hub so that you can pull the knuckle down without ripping the axle apart. Next, right over here, if you follow the caliper and the brake hose, you'll see this 10 millimeter nut. You'll need to loosen this so that we can pull this bracket away from the knuckle. Just loosen it up a few turns. You don't need to take it all the way off. This is plenty. And then with a small hammer, tap on the end of the stud. That'll push it through and basically unlock this bracket from the knuckle. Just like that. This comes out, now we have a lot more slack on the brake hose. Next, it would make things easier if we removed the caliper assembly. So with a 15 millimeter socket, go ahead and take out both of the mounting bolts. Leave this one in a few threads while you unscrew this one. Support the caliper and pull out the top bolt. Pull the caliper off and I like to hang it by a bungee cord on the strut here. That way it's nice and secure, puts no pressure on the brake hose. Now we can remove the rotor because it's not being held on by anything. Next we want to take off these two mounting nuts for the strut and typically this would be connected here and you would probably have to unplug it or disconnect it, dismount it to make room for your socket here. Mine's already broken off so I don't have to worry about it. But with an 18 millimeter socket, remove these two nuts that hold the strut bolts on. You don't have to worry about holding the other side of the bolt because it's actually pressed into the knuckle. We'll have to tap it out in a second. Leave the two nuts flush with the end of the studs or the bolts. That way you can use a hammer without damaging the threads. Now take your hammer and tap these out. Take the mounting nuts off. There's a bracket behind here that also has to come off. And finish driving these through. Wiggle the strut, or the knuckle, and pull these out. This is gonna wanna separate. At this point, you wanna make sure that the axle pushes through. This can slide out of your way like this. And axle's out of the knuckle, perfect. Now if you follow the axle in, you'll see where it connects to the transmission. Just in case fluid comes out, I put a collection bucket underneath because, you know, fluid always comes out when you're not prepared for it. Anyway, now I'm gonna take a pry bar and just pop the axle out of the transmission. Just like that. The longer the pry bar, the easier it's gonna be. All right. Just slide it out. And there it is. There's your old CV axle. Now you want to take your new CV axle, slide it in and line it up with the splines on the transmission, wiggle it around to make sure that it is lined up, and then give it a quick push to kind of start locking it in. Now you want to take a rubber mallet, it's important to have a rubber mallet, not a hammer, and just tap it in until it fully bottoms out on the transmission. Make sure that it's fully bottomed out. Before the axle goes into the knuckle, I like to put some anti-seize on the splines. That way it doesn't seize up in the knuckle in the future. You don't need a lot, just a light coating on all the splines is uh, plenty. And then you want to take the axle, line it up with the hub, and press it in. And now once the axle's through, lift up the knuckle, position it, and line it up with the uh, strut. And then try to put one of these bolts through. All right, now it's staying in place. Put the other one in. Drive them through. 
Take this bracket, slide it on, and start on the two nuts. Let's bottom them out while we're at it. You wanna go until the bolt is completely pressed through. 89 foot-pounds for both of these. Um, I know my bracket here is kind of broken, but it is what it is. I at least need this part to hold the uh, ABS wire on. At this point, if your hub is not clean, uh, then you'd want to clean it up with a wire brush and then put anti-seize on it and make it look like this. Mine already has anti-seize. I'm just going to touch it up a little bit over here. But uh, do the same to the back side of your rotor. Don't put anti-seize on it, but do clean it up if it's rusted because otherwise it won't seat properly. It'll, be, it'll have an uneven surface to sit on and then you'll get braking issues. I'm go ahead and put it on, just like that. Take your caliper, slide it over the rotor, line it up with the bolt holes on the knuckle, get your two bolts in. If you wanted to use anything on the threads, use thread locker, not anti-seize or grease. Let's bottom these out and then torque them to 96 foot-pounds. Okay, 96, that's one, and two. Take your new axle nut, put it on, bottom it out, and then we'll torque it. I didn't use the air gun to tighten it, I just used it to bottom it out quickly. I'm using a pry bar through the lug studs to make sure that the hub doesn't spin as I try to tighten it, and the nut gets torqued to 159 foot-pounds. Right there, perfect. One last thing is to put this bracket back in here. As you can see, I put some anti-seize on the bolt in there, on the stud. Hopefully it won't seize up in the future if I do that. And now you can just tighten the nut. And as you tighten the nut, it's supposed to pull the stud through and basically clamp this whole bracket onto the strut. Don't over tighten it. Just make it nice and snug and make sure that this bracket is secured on here, which it is, so that's perfect. Let's get the wheel back on. Start on all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Grab your hubcap, if you have one, and line it up with the valve stem. There's a hole here for it, otherwise the valve stem will get crushed and probably this won't even line up. So go ahead and line that up and then thread in the little caps. This is what holds on your uh, hubcap. And I prefer doing these by hand because if you over tighten them, which is very easy to do with a power tool, then they just strip out and then your hubcap goes flying off uh, while you're driving, which is not great. So. Make those nice and snug by hand, and now you can rotate it down to your local alignment shop and get a professional alignment.